Kathy, let's start with, with the basic premise of the work, asset-based thinking. And we'll also refer to that throughout the day as ABT. What is asset-based thinking? It's, it's more than just positive thinking, isn't it? You know, when you look at positive thinking, many people say, gee, I wish I could do more of that. Some people say, oh, I don't really want to do that. It's not really very realistic. Mm -hmm. So asset-based thinking is actually a methodology. It's a set of principles that have practices and processes that help us really be in charge of what it is we're looking at and how we leverage any situation, whether it be welcomed or un unwelcomed, how we leverage the strengths that we possess personally, and how can we leverage those interactions with other people that are so critical to getting work done, to being successful, to getting the kind of results we want. So asset-based thinking is a set of tools. It's not just a promise. It's not just a call to action. It is those things. But then we actually learn how to do that, how to be an asset-based thinker. And it's in contrast. I love what you actually called it to me earlier. It has an evil twin, deficit-based thinking, which is the label for being really focused on what's problematic and therefore frustrating, what is wrong and therefore enraging, what is it that's not working and therefore burdensome. And of course, we, you know, we have to acknowledge problems, but an asset-based thinker will really look slightly at the problem and immediately see how is this an opportunity to move forward? How do we direct our attention to the solution that will make us better than ever? So asset-based thinking is a brand of thinking that we can cultivate. Deficit-based thinking, unfortunately, we're born with. We actually, by nature and nurture, are much more uh, competent, if you will, at the deficit-based thinking channel in our mind than we are the asset-based thinking channel. So what I'm hearing a little bit is, I guess for better or for worse, and it sounds like for worse, the deficit-based thinking might be our default mode. You know, it's so interesting when you look at the new neuroscience over the last decade. Uh, we actually have physiological, neurological proof that the three basic parts of our brain, which brain stem, limbic system, midbrain, cortex, we're mostly cortex, that that whole triune brain is hardwired to be more vigilant, more alert, more reactive to danger, something that's not working. And danger in our lives, obviously, um, does not uh, really represent a threat to our physical existence, it's usually a threat to the plan or a threat to what we're trying to make happen or a threat to our relationships. But the same physiology is involved as it would be if you were on the tundra. And it is more rapid, it is more intense, it captures our attention and our um, imagination much more quickly than, uh, let's call it, the good brain. The new neuroscience, however, is so heartening because we can develop more of a habit by intention and effort at really shifting the whole shoot and match so that we are more interested, more intensely reacting to what is possible and what is strong and what is good. Talk about some of the differences between, specific differences between asset-based thinking and deficit-based thinking. So the metaphor that I often use that I think really works is think of it as a channel in your mind. Literally, CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, I don't want to leave anybody out. So <laughs> I think mine would be the cartoon channel. Right, okay, the cartoon <laughs> channel, right. Um, so think about this. If you have tuned in to the deficit-based thinking DBT channel, your programming is very different the way you see the world is full of the deficits that are currently operating and they always operate in abundance. So you might be thinking or seeing and then thinking and feeling not good enough. 
this, I don't want this. We have so far to go. We're in the hole. This person never, ever really kicks into gear. I always have to prod this person. All of that is true, and the programming, not only in your mind, but then as it plays out in the way you respond and act, has us on high alert. You mentioned stress earlier. So literally, we are operating, serving ourselves internally stress hormones, acetylcholine, cortisol, and we're, at, you know, we're revved up and oftentimes have a downward spiral that leads us into being much more reactive, much less thoughtful, much less engaging than we would be if we were on the ABT channel. ABT takes identically the same situation, but it would ask a different question. So what do I want versus what don't I want? What are the small indications of progress versus look how far away we are from the goal? How do I really value this person? What do they bring to the table versus how do they disappoint me all the time? So almost every interaction, any situation, even if you're looking at yourself, right? What am I best at versus how do I suck, right? And we can all see both sides of those coins if we step back. And what asset-based thinking programming does for us is it puts us much more in the driver's seat. We can almost always expect a happy ending. And our relationships, uh, as the result, are really much more robust. People want to be around us. People want to be led by us. Those are the differences.